When we start off, we often uh, start off at zero degrees in the um, mid-esophageal four-chamber view. And as you can see, I'm just I'm at about 35 centimeters in this patient. And what I'm going to do is you can see that the septum, so we've got left ventricle there, we've got the septum, and then we've got a little bit of the right ventricle. So to do a bit more of an RV-focused view, um, I guess that we're all going to be distracted by this flail mitral leaflet that we can see, but we're going to concentrate on the RV for now. Um, so what we will do, what I'll do to focus the RV a little bit here is actually rotate to the patient's right. And you see how that just brings the right ventricle with the tricuspid valve and the right atrium into view there. And we really just get a nicer look at the RV free wall, um, how the septum's moving, and we get an idea just eyeballing there, you know, what the, what the tricuspid um, what the tapsy would be, just eyeballing it. And you can really see from, from this view why doing things like tapsy in a toe might be challenging because your angle is going to be completely off. Um, and we can, you just get an idea of how well that free wall is thickening. Um, and you can sort of uh, eyeball a fractional area change. What we could do here um, is freeze this image. And then I could scroll back to end diastole is here and we're going to go from tricuspid annulus and trace round including the trabecular trabecular in the calculation tricuspid annulus to tricuspid annulus and that'll give us an area and we'll come along to systole mid systole and again <coughs> measure that out again so looking at the area change there and that will give us the dis difference between those of course will give us our fractional area change Other simple things that we can do, obviously looking at the right ventricular function, is to assess the tricuspid valve. Um, so we're just, you know, having a look at whether it's thickened and how it's coacting, and we can. We're probably seeing the the anterior and septal leaflets here, but it's really difficult to know what what leaflets we're dealing with. But the thing that we want to know, you know, tying it together, is is there any significant uh, tricuspid regurgitation? So I'm just going to pop some colour over that there now. And again, I'm just sort of rotating through, sort of slicing through that to see whether there's any significant tricuspid regurge. And I can't see any significant tricuspid regurge there. So what I'll do now, if I want to just have a bit more of a look at the right ventricle, again, subjectively, is I'm going to pull the probe back until we get aortic valve. Okay, so we start seeing aortic valve here. And now I'm at, I'm at 32 centimetres. And then I'm going to start moving my omniplane from zero centimeters, um, zero degrees, to to around to about, you know, somewhere between forty and seventy degrees. And here we'll start getting. And I'm, I am ever so slightly just rotating this to the patient's right, just to try and get what we call this RV inflow outflow view. Yeah. All right. So this. So we come back. Found the aortic valve. Move anywhere between sort of 40 and 70, and this is called our RV inflow outflow view. And we get a nice uh, appreciation of the thickening of the inferior wall of the right ventricle. And we get to have a look at, again, the tricuspid valve, which we can zoom in on, as well as the pulmonary valve, which I must admit is sometimes difficult to see, and often we get better views in the transgastric views of the pulmonary valve. But that would just be there. And again, we can pop some colour on this and see whether we've got any significant pulmonary regurgitation, which we don't seem to have there. And then popping again some colour across the tricuspid valve, and we can't see any significant regurgitation there. All right, then the next things that we would do uh, for subjective analysis of the right ventricle are now in the transgastric views. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm at 32 centimetres here. Now I'm going to be pushing in, and we can look at the RV as we're going down, you know, just sort of getting a bit of a feel for the right ventricle, whether the right atrium is dilated, um, and how well that wall's thickening. And then we're going to go down at zero degrees, down to our transgastric. And now what I'm going to do is do a deep antiflexion, okay, because I want to get this. I'm going to not do the deep transgastric here, but this is more, we call a transgastric view. So now I'm at 45 centimetres. And then I'm just putting gentle anti-flexion on until we get the, the left ventricle looking like a donut. And I'm at mid-papillary, somewhere between papillary level and um, 
and mitral valve level here. But what we're going to focus on now is actually what we can do with the right ventricle here. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm only ever so, I've, I haven't got much um, force on my, on the um, wheel here, but I'm just turning ever so slightly to the patient's right side. And here we start getting lovely views um, of the right ventricle and the tricuspid apparatus. And what we can do here is we're seeing, we're seeing the septal, septal and probably posterior leaflets of the tricuspid valve. We're not going to talk about 3D of the tricuspid, but I'm just going to start coming around to 30 to 40 degrees on the omniplane. And this often gives you that nice, what we call the sort of surgeon's view or the on fast view of the, of the tricuspid valve. And again, as I'm doing this, I'm just slightly rotating to the patient's right hand side. And what we're getting there is that nice And we've got that nice sort of on fast view of the tricuspid. See all the leaflets coming together. And then what I can do is pop some colour on that and we're going to be looking for, again, any tricuspid regurg and we couldn't really see much of that in the other views, but again, just confirming. And then we're going to go to somewhere between 60 and 90, it depends on each patient, but we're just going to slowly rotate that omniplane. And I am just going to slightly reduce the depth there as well. And we're coming into our RVOT view. And what we'll start seeing in that far field there is the pulmonary valve. Okay, so what we can see here now that we're in the um, RV outflow sort of view at the transgastric level is that we've got, we're at 60 degrees of the omniplane. And we can see the pulmonary valve just at the bottom of the screen there. Unfortunately, it's not, um, it's not the best uh, view of this. I'm going to put colour down that, so this is the RV outflow. Let's save that. So we can't see much pulmonary regurg. Now, it, the Doppler angle is not great for this, uh, is it? But I'm just going to pop, take the colour back off and try and pop my pulse wave Doppler just behind the pulmonary valve there that we can see. And I'm going to hit pulse wave and this will give us an idea of, of RV outflow. I'm just going to optimise that by changing the low velocity flow rejection. The scale settings are probably okay. And that's a, that's a reasonable flow profile. So I'm going to freeze that and I'm going to store that. Um, the things that we can do on this, so if I change the horizontal sweep setting, we can get reasonable uh, views of the RV outflow track. We're not quite getting a closing click, so we're probably not quite perfect, but things that we can do is we can measure the acceleration time so pulmonary valve axial time, so the start of ejection, the time taken from the start of ejection to the peak of ejection. And this gives us an idea of pulmonary vascular resistance. Um, you know, being less than 105 milliseconds is indicative of raised pulmonary vascular resistance, raised pulmonary pressures. And as we get to, or to less than 90 milliseconds, that's, it's got a reasonable um, performance in detecting you know, significantly high pulmonary vascular resistance of more than three wood units. Other things we can do, of course, is trace out the RVOT um, to get an idea of, of what the cardiac output is, because often we, you know, we don't always get that lovely LVOT, uh, VTI trace, so we can use this to get our RVOT, VTI, and then we can use the diameter of the right ventricular outflow tract and, and work out the stroke volume and then cardiac output. It's quite nice. Uh, what do we get there? 18.5 centimetres. We generally av average that out. Other things that we can look for is the shape of this waveform. So if there's notching, again, it's not always perfect because you're not always going to have that beautiful Doppler angle, um, but you need to put it together with the whole picture. So that's how we would sort of um, look at the pulmonary hemodynamics. Now you can see here that I've got lost whilst I've been doing uh, the Doppler thing. So I just need to find where I am again. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that back slightly to get to 45, and then I can see the left ventricle in the middle there. I'm going to put my anti-flexion on, and again, come back to the right ventricle. And what we, I'm just twisting ever so gently just to the patient's right-hand side. You see how I'm not using the second wheel? Um, you very rarely need that. Sometimes you, you do uh, need to use it a little bit to get that in. Now what I'm going to do is we've done the tricuspid sort of on fast view, and we've got nice views of that um, and we've done that RV outflow tract view. So I'll just turn that back off again. Now what we're going to do is the RV two chamber view and this is quite a nice um, 
a nice view, I think. It's one of my favourite ones. So what we can see here is I'm coming round somewhere between, it depends on the patient, but again, somewhere between um, 90 and 110 degrees. We can see liver at the top there. And we can see the inferior and the anterior wall of the right ventricle. Just pointing out the anterior wall, we can see that's thickening nicely, as well as the inferior wall. And we've got nice views of the tricuspid. Here I do like to do some multi-D imaging. We can nice invert that and then you get nice sort of views of the through the <coughs> tricuspid valve and you can sweep through that looking at the anterior leaflet, the posterior leaflet there um, and then find the, the septal leaflet as well. Septal, anterior, posterior. So it's quite nice for doing that. And then of course we can put some colour on if there was any regurg and have a, have a look at that. So you can see that Although toe is not great for Doppler angles, you actually get to see all of the walls. And we need to think about the walls of the right ventricle um, and, and assess all of those rather than just look at it as a global structure. So I think using a combination of this tricuspid, of this transgastric view with your midesophageal chamber views, you can get quite a nice idea of the function of the right ventricle um, subjectively.